if you were to go invent a carbon capture machine, you couldn't invent a better machine than a tree in terms of mitigation of climate change. David Cleaves is climate change advisor for the U.S. Forestry Service. He says trees provide at least part of the solution to climate change. Uh, first of all, trees um, capture carbon from the atmosphere, capture carbon dioxide, convert it to carbon in the tree, and store it there for hundreds of years. And even if a tree is turned into a wood product, that carbon remains stored there for many, many years, many decades, even hundreds of years more. Cleves admits his bias toward trees, but he's not alone. Five years ago, the United Nations initiated a program at the Climate Change Conference for reducing emissions from deforestation and forest degradation, now called Red Plus. One of the solutions being discussed is a pay-for-performance mechanism. The Forestry Service's Shira Yaffe explains. Where countries will be paid for their efforts to um, reduce greenhouse gas emissions from their forest lands. And that's in the process of being negotiated, and that's really focused on developing countries. South America and Africa have had the highest rate of deforestation, losing more than 7 million hectares of forest annually between 2000 and 2010. Such deforestation, says John Watkin of Conservation International, has ramifications well beyond its borders. The Congo Basin is responsible for the rainfall that results in Lake Victoria receiving 70 percent of its water directly from rain onto it. Uh, Lake Victoria is the most thunderous area in the world. Um, it's one of the sources of the Nile. Now, if the deforestation um, is extrapolated for the Congo Basin throughout DRC and, and the, the other countries, um, we will see a reduction in rainfall onto Lake Victoria, which will result in a reduction in, in rainfall onto the lake and, and the flow of the Nile out. That's going to have significant ramifications for all the countries north up into, towards the Mediterranean. According to Conservation International, almost 60 percent of the world's forests are in developing countries. But 13 million hectares of forest are cleared each year for agriculture, ranching, logging and mining. Efforts like Africa's Green Belt Movement have helped improve deforestation rates with an emphasis on tree planting and sustainable farming. Other programs like the U.S. Forestry Service seek to put a value on trees. Matthew Edwardson is the Africa Program Coordinator with the U.S. Forestry Service. Um, in Central Africa, for example, we're working very closely uh, in Gabon um, with the Gabonese government um, to basically help them inventory their national forest and really understand what they have. And that it is the fundamental um, behind allowing for those countries to enter into these carbon market schemes which are being developed because you have to know what you have before you can actually go forward and sell it. Edwardson says the U.S. Forestry Service is working hard to adapt its forest management to a changing climate domestically as well as abroad. And that's what we're, you know, also trying to help individuals understand in Africa is, you know, given, you know, the increase in temperature in certain areas of, you know, the Albertine Rift area of, you know, Rwanda, Uganda, et cetera, what, what's going to happen to agricultural production systems? Will maize grow at a certain you know, level? And if it will not grow there, you know, where are people going to move? And how do you adapt the management of a protected area to understand those likely loc movements of, of people? So helping policy and decision makers better understand that. So while deforestation affects climate change, a warmer climate or a colder climate for that matter affects the forest. We know that the forests themselves, the ones that are here, are evolving and moving basically northward and up the slopes because the, the warmer temperatures and everything goes along with it are chasing them. Our fires have gone up to about double the rate. Uh, the insect and disease problems because of the, the drought-induced stress and the susceptibility to insect and disease damage has gone up by an order of three just in the last 15 years. So we have many more acres that have been disturbed that need to be rapidly regenerated. Because of replanting efforts, the net loss of trees has slowed. Asia has actually increased its forest cover by more than 2 million hectares annually for the past 10 years. Nigeria has one of the worst deforestation rates in the world, but the UN Food and Agriculture Organization says it is Brazil that loses the most forest land each year, more than two and a half million hectares annually. Rebecca Ward, VOA News.